Reading the world news today, here are the major headlines. A Russian star of international online poker, 26-year-old Lilia Novikova, has died of electrocution in her bath in Moscow. German soldiers held for blocking runaway truck on Autobahn. Second patient dies of Ebola in Uganda. Iran's supreme leader rules out negotiations with U.S. Fatima, Kenya, female lawmaker beaten up by colleague. Rand sleeps over Ramaphosa campaign donation probe. And Okoracha won sworn in as senator. Thanks for joining us on The World News Today. I am Priscilla A. Worm. An elderly neighbor found Novikova's body in the bath after receiving an emergency call from Novikova's parents. Her poker fans knew her as Leah, reports suggest she suffered a fatal electric shock while using her hair dryer in the flat where she lived with her parents. She was well known on Twitch TV, a live streaming channel for online gamers. Soldiers in the German army prevented a potential motorway disaster when they brought a runaway lorry to a halt after its driver collapsed in his car. They realized there was a problem when they saw the lorry collide with the central reservation on the A4 autobahn near Gera in eastern Germany. The lorry was going slowly through roadworks, but they feared an accident. One of the soldiers tried to clamber into the cab, and when they failed, they drove in front of the lorry. A doctor who quickly on the scene, but the driver 67 died later. A grandmother in Uganda has died from Ebola, health officials said on Thursday. The second fatality in the country since a major outbreak in Democratic Republic of Congo crossed the border. Ebola Health Minister Jane Ruth Asang announced Wednesday that Uganda had recorded three cases of Ebola in the first known cross-border spread, spread since an outbreak began in eastern Congo last August. The patients were from a family of six, including four children that traveled to Congo to care for a relative. And now let's take a short break, and when we return, we have more stories. Welcome back. Here again are the headlines. Iran's supreme leader rules out negotiation with U.S. Fatima, Kenya, female lawmaker, beaten up by colleague, and Rand sleeps over a Ramaphosa campaign donation probe, a coroner sworn in as senator. It's Prime Minister Shenzo Abe, the U.S. unilaterally withdrew in 2018 from the Iran agreement, which was aimed at preventing the Iran from acquiring a nuclear asset. Washington's decision to begin implementing oil and banking sanctions has crippled Iran's economy and placed the deal's European signatories under pressure. A member of the Kenyan parliament representing Waje East, Rashid Kazim, has been arrested hours after allegedly assaulting Waje County woman representative Fatuma Geda. Waje woman representative Fatuma was allegedly beaten up on Thursday morning by Waje East MP Rashid Amin in the parliament building. It is alleged that Gede engaged him in a heated discussion before she was assaulted by the MP. The MP demanded to know why Gede, who is a member of the budget committee, did not allocate any money to his Waje East constituency. South Africans ran sleep on Thursday as investors were unnerved by an investigation into a donation by President Cyril Ramaphosa's 2017 campaign. 
Leader of the Governing African National Congress Party, Ramaphosa, has said he will cooperate with the investigation into whether he misled Parliament over the donation made by the head of services company, Bosasa, and analyst says there is no immediate risk that he would be removed from office. But the anti-corruption watchdog's investigation increases political uncertainty at a time when the economy is performing poorly. The rand traded at 14.90 versus the dollar 0.2% weaker than its previous closed government bonds. Also fell as the yield on the benchmark 2026 Bono rose to 3.5 basic points to 8.40 percent. Immediate past governor of Imo State, Rochester Karcher, has been sworn in as senator representing Imo West Senatorial District. Clerk to the Senate, Nelson Ayewo, conducted a swearing in after which Okorja signed necessary documents. The former governor was not among those that took oaths of office on Tuesday when the Senate was inaugurated. The Independent National Electoral Commission had on Tuesday issued Okorja with his certificate of return after a court order. INEC had refused to recognize Okorja's victory, alleging that it was unlawfully secured. The chairman Nigerian Union of Journalists Kaduna State Council has called on the 6th State Assembly to ensure speedy passage of the information bill within the first 100 days in office. Our correspondent Uchechi Nemua has the report. Kaduna State Council has called on the 6th State Assembly to ensure they pass the information bill within the first 100 days in office. He said this in Kaduna during the Maiden Democracy Day public lecture with a team strengthening democracy, good governance, and rule of the media. In their separate address, Comrade Adam Yusuf, NUG Chairman, Kaduna State, called on State Assembly to pass the information bill by Comrade Yusuf Idris, NUG Vice Chairman, not way soon, urged politicians to give Nigerians the dividends of democracy. Let me add this. Juncture call on the ninth Cardinal State Assembly to ensure the passage of Freedom of Information Bill. Already this bill has passed the second reading. We are praying for this Lawa as a match. Another person will march as deputy. A speaker will march and they should work together for the interest of this country. That's the most important thing. That, that's the bottom line. Alaji Madi Shehu and Andrew Fatherson, who serves as chairman and paper presenter respectively, also called on journalists to always speak the truth and give adequate information through advocacy journalism. We should not just report. The days of reporting have gone. We should now start thinking of making government And that was the world news. Thanks for watching. I am Priscilla Aworm. And don't forget that life is very simple. Leave it with caution.